Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, Circa Millions contest for week seven. We're going to talk about what happened in week six and uh, go on to make our selections for week seven. And I'm the worst in that I forgot to do this yesterday, and we're going to get to the impact of that in a minute. Again, what we're trying to accomplish here is, again, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's not necessarily um, gauging how good we are picking the, against the spread. Remember, this is a contest. We're completely trying to outperform the market here. And not the betting market per se, but the actual people betting in this contest. So all of these spreads rate to be about 50% uh, to come in. So if we can figure out where everybody else is playing and go against them, we've done our job and then just kind of leave it up to the variance guys. Now, as it turns out, I mean, variance has not been kind to us, but all we're trying to accomplish for this contest and, and subsequent contests and contests like this is try to train our, our brains to figure out what types of plays are most likely to be played. And if we can develop that skill, it becomes very, very useful for this contest and ones in the future. So um, let us review what happened last week. So the first thing that we did was, as usual, we bet the Thursday game because it's incredibly low owned. And I basically just could have picked either of these teams and have been well within my rights. Uh, we did take the Broncos, who turned out to be the lowest owned team on the whole board, and they lost by half a point. But whatever, I don't care. That's really, really, it's extremely good. The second team that we played was Seattle. And they, as it looks like, were uh, either the third or fourth lowest team, lowest owned team on the whole board. Um, and uh, they lost as well. But who cares? This is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. We did not get the Titans. They were really low owned. Uh, that would have been nice if we, if we played them. The other teams that we screwed around with was, I like the, now this is weird, I like the Colts. I ended up not doing it because I didn't like the, the possibility of getting a push. Um, but it turns out I was really off with my assessment of that game. Um, I really thought they'd be low owned and they were really popular. So I consider that uh, kind of a failure. We did take the Panthers and check this out. They were one of the lowest owned teams on the whole board, maybe second lowest. It turns out they lost, but whatever. And the other team we ended up taking were the Giants. And they were, they were, I think, the fourth or fifth lowest on team. So this is actually quite amazing okay, that we were able to do this. We got, I think, five of our five picks. I think all five were the five of the seven lowest owned teams on the whole board. And that is just insane. Um, so uh, we're looking at that as a huge positive. Uh, going forward uh, in this coming week, this coming uh, contest like this. So again, we have to review what our criterion is, for our criteria is for our criteria are for making these types of selections. So again, we're trying to find the teams that people are likely to play. And those are number one, favorites. They love playing favorites. Number two, they like playing home teams. They like playing teams that are just kind of like good. And when I say good, that's with good quarterbacks, good coaches, teams with good reputations, like teams like the Patriots. They always play the Patriots, you know, regardless of how good they are. Okay. Always play the Patriots. They always play teams like the Steelers. Steelers, we we find that we found out are extremely popular literally every single week. And they really, they really bet against the bad teams. I mean, to an incredible degree. Like, Look at this Giants ownership. Look at this, like, Cardinals ownership. Like, teams that people think are bad, Panthers, they just always stream against them. And uh, in addition to that, people like to play around those key numbers. Like, if they like a, a favorite, they really like a favorite if it's two and a half. They really like an underdog if it's three and a half. They really like a favorite if it's six and a half. They really like an underdog if it's seven and a half. So these types of criterion have been criteria have led us to this uh, this idea of how to pick these low owned teams, and we are really really doing well as far as that goes. Now again, it would be nice if the results of the actual games would follow, but you give me five to one odds on say, 
you know, the Bills or something like that, not the Bills, like the Giants against like some other team. I mean, that's like amazing. Okay. You give me, check this out. You give me the Panthers at four to one odds in this exact game. I mean, let's go. Um, so anyway, that was uh, Pat this past week. Now let's talk about this coming week. So this was really, really terrible. Um, turns out it helped me, but whatever. You're always, I'm telling you, you're always supposed to play this Thursday game. The Thursday game is always low owned. And the reason why people play it is because they don't want to risk, you know, some good CLV spot coming up on a Sunday um, and they're killing a Thursday game to do it. But if these teams are so low owned, it more, more than overwhelms that consideration. So I was supposed to bet something this week. I just ran out of time. And by the time I decided that I was thinking of doing this video, it was already past the deadline for entering yesterday. And so I got tilted and I just didn't even do the video. Um, I don't even know which one of these teams I would have taken. I, I think I probably would have taken the Saints and lost, but it doesn't matter. That's a really big mistake, not playing one of these Thursday games. But nonetheless, let's see if we can't you know, go through our normal analysis and pick five teams that we think are going to be low owned. So again, what are we looking for? We're looking for underdogs around those key numbers, things like that. And right off the bat, the Falcons look amazing. Like Falcons plus only two and a half on the road, not to mention the fact that I don't think they've won on the road this year. And I think people have to notice that. Um, so I think the Falcons are kind of an easy one. Oh, here are the other things we also avoid. Because we're trying to be an auxillion people, we have to try to avoid these push spreads. OK, even though, I mean, you get like a half point for pushes, that's just not even going to be good enough. OK, um, we have to avoid these push spreads. So minus three, minus three, minus three, no good. Patriots plus eight and a half against the Bills. See, here's the problem with this one. The Patriots are popular every week. However, people love, hate playing these bad teams. And now Patriots are considered a bad team. So I'm probably going to have to avoid this one unless I can't find anything else. Commanders, three, no good. All right, so Seattle is seven and a half over the Cardinals, and people have been streaming against the Cardinals the whole season. So it's not perfect because it's seven and a half, but I still think that the Cardinals, I mean, literally every week are low owned. So we're going to go right back to them. Uh, again, I prefer it not to be seven and a half. I think it's going to detract from some of the ownership, but I still think it's worth it. Steelers push spread. No good. Chiefs five and a half against the Chargers. This is this is beautiful. I mean, who the hell is taking the Chargers plus less than a touchdown against the Chiefs? Chiefs never lose. Chargers are huge chokers. They're on the road. This is like an easy play as far as I'm concerned. So. So far, Falcons, Cardinals, and Chargers. Uh, Packers, one and a half at Broncos. I mean, I can't imagine anybody playing the Packers on the road as a favorite. Um, so I'm, I think the Packers are probably pretty easy. So we'll play the Packers. Eagles, minus two and a half against the Dolphins. I mean, the Eagles are the ultra hipster play of the week. You know, Eagles are coming off the loss. They're at home. Uh, Miami going on the road, going to finally get, you know, brought down to earth or something like that. You can play the Eagles getting old, playing only two and a half. You know, I don't know who's playing Miami in this game. So we're going to take them. Uh, and then just to look at this, Niners Vikings. Uh, Monday night, seven point spread, not, you know, probably a push spread. So. We actually did fall on five teams pretty uh, pretty quickly because of these push spreads. The only the only thing I have to consider is whether I want to go take the Patriots here. But I just the Bills are coming off that atrocious game against the Giants. I think people are going to be gun shy, so I'm probably going to avoid that. So this kind of like all you know comes together in that you know you have the right spreads, you have the right sides, and they're probably some of the only teams only games that don't have that push big against them. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to take Falcons, Cardinals, Chargers, Packers, and the Dolphins. Um, and that'll do it. We're going to wait. Hold on. 
We'll take these, boom, one, two, three, four, five. But remember, we should have bet this Thursday. Okay, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.